if you're seeing yourself not pursuing the things that you want in your life and having the life that you have designed for yourself because you keep reverting back to the past for examples of good or bad, right or wrong, then I would challenge you in your thinking is that what you're doing right now is you are taking action based off of circumstances that are coming your way. What I'd like to invite you into is that you're starting to take action and getting results that you want in your life based off of the thoughts you have about situations that come your way and the feelings that you have about those thoughts. How we do that is we ask ourselves really powerful questions. We also design a future that is never gonna happen in, or it's never gonna happen if we don't put massive action around it. So it's this impossible goal. It's this, you know, uh, maybe even fantastical view of what our vision could look like five or 10 years from now. Where are we living? Who are we living with? And that we're putting towards goals that will help us in this effort of taking massive action. Hello, and welcome to the Three Uniques podcast. I'm your host, Brenda Rigney. I'm a life and leadership coach, ready to help you unleash your uniqueness, align to your purpose, and take massive action towards your goals. I'm a single mom and a purpose-led believer. My mission is to maximize human potential, and I do this through my one-to-one group and retreat coaching experiences. Learn more about my upcoming retreats and group masterminds by checking out 3uniquescoaching.com. Now, our guest on the 3 Uniques podcast. Hey everyone, it's Brenda. I'm back again on Friday talking about knowing your feelings. I'm glad that you're here today. So all this week I've been doing Instagram Lives, uh, really getting us connected to our thoughts and our feelings and our actions. So hey Deb, good to see you back. Um, so on Monday, I talked about the power of asking questions. Tuesday, I was on with She Summits Forum and uh, we were talking about unleashing your uniqueness. On Wednesday, I came back to talk more about uh, asking powerful questions, but this time of your team to really spark ingenuity, innovation, creativity. Yesterday on Thursday, I talked about uncovering our beliefs and really being able to navigate those thoughts that we have that keep coming up in our head around our goals, our projects, uh, our vision for our life and how to navigate them. And then today to kind of really finish off the week in a really nice little package is I'm talking about knowing your feelings. So pulling up my book, just to make sure I got my notes in front of me. It's always good to have stuff here. And let me introduce myself to you before we get started. My name is Brenda. I'm a life and leadership coach, and I work with clients one-to-one in groups and at my retreat that's going to be happening in November on Galliano Island. And I primarily work with women leaders and entrepreneurs, although I do work with men. Um, And I spend time with clients one-to-one in three-month coaching experiences. And then I've got my group mastermind, which spans over 12 months. And the reason why it's 12 months, because sometimes people say, oh, it's really long, Brenda, and I don't know if I want to spend 12 months in coaching. And I'm like, I get it. It's not like we're coaching every day for 12 months. That would be just a little intense. But here's the thing is we are learning how to navigate our thoughts, our feelings, and our actions to get the desired result that we want to have in our life. It's not going to happen overnight. Not that I'm not a good coach and I can't help get you there sooner than later, but here's what I see happen a lot of times, and this is just natural, is that we default all the time to our reptilian brain. Our reptilian brain is always looking for patterns, uh, familiarity, comfort in how we do things. And if we want to see transformation, we need to repeat the actions, the feelings, the thoughts that will take us towards that future focus. If we don't, we end up defaulting back to the past, how we've always done it, what's familiar and what's comfortable. And this is the difference Like Carol Dweck, she'll talk about it from a comfort zone to learning zone to growth zone. We need to be continually asking ourselves questions, thinking about our future focus and what's possible and interrupting those thought patterns on a daily basis. So by working with me over 12 months, not only are we setting intentions and goals for what our life is going to be like a year from now, but we're also getting into the practice on a regular basis. You can come in and be part of my weekly group coaching sessions. You can work with me one-to-one during that time period. You can also attend some of the fabulous guest mentors that I bring into Aligned AF that come from all different types of backgrounds. We've got nutritionists and wellness coaches. We've got uh, intimacy and relationship coaches. We've got confidence communication coaches, 
holistic inner healers, uh, EFT tapping, spiritual guides. We have people from all different types of um, backgrounds, financial planners, uh, branding yourself on LinkedIn uh, type people. So lots of different uh, backgrounds, reconciliation, diversity, equity, inclusivity, belonging specialists to look at your communication and how you're showing up as a leader. So we'll bring in those guest experts to really help you navigate the goals that are really important to you. Because along this journey that we're together for 12 months, you're enrolling me in your goals. And I love helping my clients reach their goals. So if I can help get them there, and with the help of some of the people that are like fabulous people that are in my network of amazing mentors, coaches, practitioners that can help get you there, then we're gonna do this together. So yeah, if you're interested in learning more about my coaching experiences, DM me, let me know. I'm happy to talk to you about them. And you can enroll in the group coaching mastermind anytime you want. It's my evergreen program. It's always available. And my one-to-one coaching, I'm setting up with new clients this September, October, November, getting into the fall. We'll take a little bit of time off in part of December and then resume again in January, depending if you're signing up for three or six months. Okay, so that's that. That's a little bit about me. So today we're talking about knowing our feelings. And let's just back up a little bit because I think the key thing is when we talked yesterday about uncovering our beliefs, that those are asking ourselves those questions about where do our thoughts come from and how do we generate feelings and actions that get us the result that we want. Oftentimes, and so you'll hear me repeat this, is that people will default back to circumstances, situations or issues that come their way. He said this to me, they did that to me, and as a result, I'm taking these type of actions. So when that occurs, and not that it's right or wrong, but just to recognize it and to notice it, when that occurs, we're living our life on default. We are living our life based off of past experiences. When someone says this to me, I tend to react this way. And it's good to notice those things about yourself. And some of those things might be serving you. And then other times they might not be. Even if it's something that you've done really well, like I know that, for example, leading teams of people and growing organizations and working alongside a CEO that's very entrepreneurial and innovative and creative is something that I'm really good at. I spent 25 years doing that in my corporate career. I don't want to do it anymore. I love coaching CEOs and I love coaching leaders. Um, So I looked at the things that I love doing and that's where my business is aligned to. But I'm also good at doing the other stuff. I just don't want to do it anymore. So that's a pattern interruption right there. It's like my default could easily be just go and apply for a COO job and get it and make money. And I've done that. And now I want to do something different. So that's a pattern interruption and moving out of my default thinking or my default way of going about my life, even if it's successful. So just because it's successful doesn't necessarily mean it's right or wrong and you have to change it. I'm just saying... If you're seeing yourself not pursuing the things that you want in your life and having the life that you have designed for yourself because you keep reverting back to the past for examples of good or bad, right or wrong, then I would challenge you in your thinking is that what you're doing right now is you are taking action based off of circumstances that are coming your way. What I'd like to invite you into is that you're starting to take action and getting results that you want in your life based off of the thoughts you have about situations that come your way and the feelings that you have about those thoughts. How we do that is we ask ourselves really powerful questions. We also design a future that is never going to happen in, or it's never going to happen if we don't put massive action around it. So it's this impossible goal. It's this, you know, uh, maybe even fantastical view of what our vision could look like five or 10 years from now, where are we living, who are we living with, and that we're putting towards goals that will help us in this effort of taking massive action. So yesterday we talked about uncovering our beliefs and we do that through understanding our thoughts and becoming more mindfully aware of how we process our thoughts. Um, Just looking at it, like having clear, clean thoughts is really important. Being on purpose with our thoughts, being consciously aware of our thoughts This is a skill that needs to be learned and practiced and honed in on. This is not something that we're naturally conditioned into thinking, although it is becoming a lot more 
prevalent in school systems where they are talking about emotional intelligence and understanding how we impact others and recognizing all the wide range of emotions that we are equipped with as human beings. So these creative beings that operate when we are aligned with mind and body and feelings that we are operating from that prefrontal cortex, which we're equipped with. And that's such a beautiful, beautiful part of being human versus going back to our primate neighbors, animals, where they are just equipped with the hind brain, right? So the reptilian brain. We are these amazing beings that have this ability to create, to innovate, to generate, and to give back in multiple ways to communities, to our families, to organizations that we serve. Um, but we need to hone this skill of understanding how to leverage our emotions and be really intelligent from that capacity. So we're starting to learn more about this and how this is gonna be applied into school systems with young children but it's not necessarily there yet. And emotional intelligence has had a bit of a bad rap. I think, you know, sometimes people in organizations have used it, abused it um, in the sense of like uh, personality traits, assessing people, maybe 360 feedback or performance assessments. And it hasn't gone over very well. And then it's been sort of poo-pooed in organizations. But I think there's an opportunity to start bringing it back louder and clearer to people to help them understand how their emotions, which are made up of your thoughts and feelings, impact your actions that you're taking in your work, in your relationships, with your health, and how that impacts the results that you want to generate in your life. Thanks for joining me today. If you're just tuning in, I'm talking about knowing your feelings. Yesterday, I talked about uncovering your beliefs. So you can go back into my Instagram feed and watch the IG replays. I post them usually within like 20 minutes of logging off. And so they're there, they're available to you. You can just go back and watch the whole series. Uh, and if you have questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. If there's observations that you're making, if there's reflections that you're having, anything that you're agreeing with or disagreeing, feel free to drop them in the comments. Or you can DM me after, even if you're watching the replay, you can DM me afterwards. But thanks a lot for joining today. And I'm Brenda, by the way, in case we haven't met. So let's just talk a little bit about feelings and some things that we wanna uncover with it. So everything you want in your life you're hoping to feel in a specific way, right? So it's like anything that you want in your life, it's like you want that, you feel that, right? It's caused through a vibration in our body. So that's one of the ways that we can recognize our feelings, right? We sometimes have pushed them down, again, through our conditioning. Like I just go back to like the example that I can recall from you know my childhood days. It's like I'm riding my bike or skateboard or doing something physical and falling off of it and skinning my knees. And maybe my grandparents or my parents saying to me, oh, don't cry, Brenda, don't get upset. And it's just like, well, I don't know why I wouldn't get upset. There's like blood gushing out of my knee or off my elbow and I'm sad and it hurts and I'm feeling pain. So the natural human reaction is to cry um, or to feel upset or to feel frustrated or even maybe to have a negative thought about myself. Like, oh, how can I be like, you know, so klutzy? Um, which happens. I'm 5'11 and I trip over everything all the time. So I have this reoccurring negative thought that I'm just klutzy for the rest of my life. Um, so that vibration in your body is caused by something through your mind, right? So this is where the connection between thoughts and feelings comes in is that I have a thought about a situation that has happened to me and now that's creating a feeling in my body. Sometimes though, because we're not necessarily aware of our feelings or we've been told, like I said, through conditioning to push our feelings, especially the negative ones aside and just be happy, um, that we don't know how to recognize them. So when they come up, which is totally natural, we get freaked out. We're like, oh my God, I don't like feeling angry. Oh my gosh, I'm frustrated right now and I'm frustrated about feeling frustrated. And we don't know how to process them. So a way to identify them so that they're not to this extreme case in some cases, and this is where you do the daily work, the daily thought work and daily thought management, is to recognize where that vibration occurs for you in your body. So a station in your body that's caused by a negative feeling is usually involuntary. It's not something that we've generated, right? So it's like, we're going to go do something fun right now, and it feels exhilarating because we've planned for it to be fun and exhilarating and we can feel that rush and excitement in our body. That's different. That's a different type of sensation. Um, and we usually sort of cause those things to happen, right? When we do some fun things with our friends, like I'm going to go dancing on Friday night and I'm going to feel really good in my body. And then when I do, it feels like aligned. But that involuntary sensation is caused by usually a negative thought that we have about a situation that's causing a feeling, a vibration, a sensation in our body that we don't necessarily like. It's going to feel constricted. It's going to feel tight. Um, 
could be like a shortness of breath. If it shows up for you more in your breathing, in your lung area, in your chest, it may feel like a tightening in your jaw, clenching, right? Grinding your teeth. That's me. Nighttime. I always have to wear a mouth guard. Could feel like gurgling in your stomach, like maybe again, tension, and it feels like a tummy ache, right? Or gassiness, whatever that is, because you're not necessarily flowing things through easily. So that feeling is going to not feel great. And that's a good thing to recognize in your body. I know it sounds counter. It's like, yeah, we want to live these amazing lives. And yet there's this gurgling in my stomach and Brett is telling me that that feels good. Well, it doesn't necessarily feel good, but it's a good thing to notice. And the reason why I'm saying it's a good thing to notice is that sometimes if we recognize those things first, uh, it will help us understand the negative thoughts that are coming up in our head. We have so many thoughts that we're processing. Our brain is processing all the time. And if there's negative thoughts that we've been pushing away and pushing away and pushing away for years, it is conditioned now not to look at them. It's conditioned to be like, oh yeah, when Brenda gets angry, she feels this way. So we're just going to, she, she knows how to like override it. She knows how to uh, cope through it. And so we're just not going to acknowledge it and we push it aside. What I'm asking or inviting you to do is to bring that negative emotion forward as sometimes traumatic as it can be, as frustrating or as concerning as it can be, even if you have to do this in small daily doses, this is why I say daily downloads are really important versus like, oh, one time a year I go off and reflect at the beach, could bring up a lot of negative emotions that you don't know how to process because you haven't been processing them on a regular basis. So bite-sized daily downloads, take one negative thought, how does it feel in my body? Oh yeah, it's causing this like tension in my chest, right? That's Good for me to know when I get that negative tension feeling that I may be being caused by a negative thought and I should investigate that. I should be curious versus defaulting to I don't know and pushing it aside. Get curious. Do the daily downloads step by step, bite piece by bite piece so that we're not overriding or overwhelming our nervous system, but we're doing it on a regular basis that we can actually start breaking down the layers of where these negative thoughts are coming from. Hi friends, it's Brenda here. I hope you're enjoying our podcast guest today on the Three Uniques podcast. I wanted to interrupt the interview for a couple seconds to let you know about Aligned AF. Aligned AF is my 12 month coaching experience for leaders and entrepreneurs up to big goals in their life, ready to step into their Three Uniques and fully aligning their life to their purpose. Imagine yourself living an intentional values driven life that aligns all domains professional, personal, health, wealth, and community impact. You're generating a six-figure and a multi-six-figure business within your first year. You're learning to love every failure and approaching new goals with possibility, energy, and love. You're unlocking your potential and overcoming your limiting beliefs in a short period of time. And you're shifting yourself from looking ahead to looking within to consider your choices, your values, and most of all, your purpose. You're identifying barriers, examining their origins, and recognizing and celebrating the range of unique skills and experiences you possess to propel you forward. You're building healthy relationships and routines, setting boundaries around the things, people, ideas that drain you without feeling guilty. If you're interested in learning more about Aligned AF, my 12-month coaching experience for leaders and entrepreneurs, Check out 3uniques.com for more details on the Aligned AF coaching experience or other coaching experiences and working with me. Take care, everyone. And now back to our guest. Feelings that start in the mind are emotions. We need to recognize that. Only put one feeling at a time, right? In when we're doing our work and our thought download. We want to explore one feeling at a time because we don't want to overload our system. And there may be multiple feelings that you have. So as you're sitting down and doing a reflection exercise, or maybe you go through a meditation or you go through a walk in nature and you're like, oh my gosh, there's so much stuff going through my head right now. Write them all down. Circle the one that you feel, right? If you read them aloud, which one feels the most tension for you? Or which feels easy for you to just scratch off the list, right? Because you're just spending a little bit more time with it. You choose. This is your thought load. This is your thought download. This is your thought management process. You choose what feels good for you. And whether you choose the most difficult one 
or the easiest one for you to process, it's all helping you move forward, right? There's no evaluation of right or wrong. There's no scorecard about who's doing a better download. Um, Brenda's doing it better. Deb's doing it better. Jen's doing it better. Like there's no right or wrong. It's the work that you're doing every single day that gets you to taking massive action around your goals. I like to refer to my notes. There's always just like key things, key nuggets I want you guys to be able to take away because there's always so much information. And by all means, I go back and listen to the replay um, because I think it's good to hear this a couple times. You'll hear me talk about this all the time whenever you tune into an IG live with me or you'll see it in my posts or if you work with me. This is the work that we do. We uncover our thoughts. We look at our feelings and we take action from there. Okay, so we've been taught also that happiness is best right? Got to be happy. Positive vibes, dude. Like it's all about positive vibes and happiness. Well, yeah, there's a part of me that agrees with that. But here's the thing. There's always going to be 50-50. In order for us to feel happiness, we also need to feel unhappiness because then we know what it feels like to be happy. If we're always just like roses and sunshine every day, we don't have any context to, well, is this a better happiness day or uh, like not so is this a two out of 10 happiness day or a 10 out of 10 happiness day we need to have the countervailing emotion we need to have the unhappiness to go along with it life is 50 50 there's sun there's rain you know it's like not everything is going to be sunny all the time or we'd be like sunstroke it's not good we need to get in the shade right so it's like we need to have balance in our emotions and i'm not talking about that we always need to be like striving for happiness sometimes it's good to stay in that negative emotion and understand it because here's like again i'll repeat myself we've been conditioned into pushing aside that negative emotion having a negative emotion is bad feeling things is bad why is she crying in a meeting because she's feeling something something is troubling her let's explore it let's talk about it let's give space to people to clear through these negative thoughts spend some time with it normalize having negative emotions so that when they do come up you won't be so freaked out your nervous system won't be like oh my god what's happening it's gonna be like oh yeah she's angry okay but she has a way of navigating through her thoughts so it's okay (laughs) this is your nervous system talking to itself because your prefrontal cortex is taking over saying hey i can be creative around how do i navigate negative emotions um yeah so we can't have happiness without unhappiness we have nothing to compare it to so we don't really know if we're happy and here is the little deal breaker that i'm going to talk to you about i want you to to, again i always talk about inviting you in or being open to the possibility of if you're living an 80 20 life so i said that really life is 50 50 50 percent happiness 50 percent unhappiness when we think about all the emotions that are made up of what makes us happy and what makes us unhappy if, but if you're saying, well, no, no, that's not true, Brenda. I'm like an 80, 20. I'm like 80% happy and 20% unhappy. Well, congratulations. But I'm going to tell you that maybe your goals aren't big enough because there's something in there where it's like, you know what? I'm just kind of riding this neutral wave. I'm not like, don't look, don't look too closely at me because you're going to see all these things that are sort of like falling apart here. Or like, oh, don't open that closet because all the stuff's going to fall out. I'm going to tell you that maybe your goals aren't big enough that maybe you need to start taking on some impossible goals, some goals that just don't seem clear for you right now. I was talking to somebody uh, that's interested in working with me, just as an example, they have a goal that they have for their business and they see that goal happening in the next two to three years. And I'm like, awesome, that's incredible. What happens if it happened in a year? And there was pause and, you know, it's like, well, but then, you know, I I won't have balance in my life and I won't be able to look after these things. And I'm like, I get it. I get it. We want to create this container of (sighs) comfort, right? Predictability, uh, usability. And the challenge that we see is like, oh, if I brought this goal a little bit closer, I may need to, what, set some more boundaries. I may need to deal with some limiting beliefs that I have about myself. I may need to deal with some money blocks that I may have about myself that I've been kind of putting over here because I'm keeping my life happy over here. And I'm just going to challenge you so gently that maybe your goals aren't big enough. And if we just made that goal a little bit bigger, guess what? It's going to get us back into that 50-50 place. And being 50-50, happy, unhappy is okay. Again, maybe we've gone through the same conditioning treatment where it's like, we got to be happy all the time. I'm just going to tell you, it's exhausting trying to be happy all the time and push off those negative thoughts. 
I'm inviting you into the possibility that you can create actually more of what you want, more happiness when you deal with the unhappiness, when you deal with the negative emotions. So try that out. Think about it. Maybe my goals aren't big enough. And here's what happens. Whenever we create bigger goals, guess what comes as a result? Bigger self-doubt. So we need to do more thought downloads, right? Doing a thought download once a year when we go off to a retreat or we go off to like this really nice beach and or we go on vacation to Maui and, you know, whatever that is. And I'm not knocking some of the things that you've been doing, but I'm just telling you, it's not going to be enough. If you want to take on that big, juicy goal of yours, you're going to have bigger self-doubt coming your way. So you're going to have to do more work around the negative thoughts that get generated. And it's all good because you got the tools. We're talking about them today, right? Doing your thought downloads, uncovering those beliefs about yourself. What's the thought that I'm having, right? That's a simple question when you're doing a thought download. What is the thought that's coming up right now for me? What's the thought that I'm having about this situation? What's the thought that I'm having about what Sally said to me? or what Derek did in the meeting yesterday. How does it make me feel is the second question. It's the thought that I'm having and how does that thought make me feel? Does it make me feel sad? Great, not great. How does that sadness show up in my body? Where does it reside in my body right now? Is it tension in my jaw? Is it tightness in my chest, in my breathing? Is it uncomfortableness in my stomach? Like, I don't know, I can't like, digest my food at lunchtime and I'm getting tummy aches, recognize that, right? Those are good things. And then as a result of that, knowing now the thoughts that I have and how it's feeling and manifesting in my body, what actions am I taking? And better yet, what actions am I not taking, right? Get curious about these things. Investigate yourself. Learn from yourself. You have so much information. You could be sitting and listening to podcasts and reading books, etc. And it's all right here. This mind management, emotional management, feelings management tool that you have available to you, it's called your prefrontal cortex, is there. It's free. Use it. Tap into it. It's a beautiful, beautiful gift that we've all been given as human beings. The bigger the goal, so does the terror that you're not enough, right? That you don't know enough. You've got to go research some things. It's like, oh, I can't can't possibly take that three-year goal that I have for myself or that five-year goal that I've pushed out to five years because it seems doable and bring it forward to the next 12 or 18 months. Cause I don't know how to do that. I've never done it before. So it can be really terrifying. We can get into that sort of catastrophizing mode. Well, what happens if I blow it? What happens if I can't make it? I asked a question this morning on Instagram. If I was to give you a hundred thousand dollars or you came across a hundred thousand dollars, would you invest in yourself or would you invest in another company? Like in the stock market, like right now could be a good time to buy. Just say that. Um, like every report out there is the stock market's going to crash tenfold and we've never seen this type of recession that we're going to go into. But if you've got some cash on hand, it could be a really good time to buy. Uh, just do your research. And the company that you're investing in, right? Know the, know the business. Anyways, I'm not going to give you financial advice right now. Um, but if I gave you $100,000, would you invest in somebody else or would you invest in yourself? How much are you betting on yourself right now? So the bigger the goal, so does the terror that you're not enough. Gotta like invest in yourself to move through that terror, right? And it's just knowing that you actually have all the tools that are available to you right here. Prefrontal cortex, tap into it. Stop being upset about being upset, right? This whole sort of thing about, well, you know, I've got negative emotions. I'm feeling this negativity. It's like what I was saying before. It's like, if you're feeling like, you know what? Negativity is bad. I want to invite you into that conditioned thinking that we need to snap out of things. We need to take the happiness pill. We need to go get a massage or a pedicure, like whatever those instantaneous things are to make us feel better about ourselves. And that may feel good in the moment. And I'm not saying don't do a meditation or don't, you know, take a self-care day. I want to invite you into doing more work, more work around your thoughts and getting into more sustainable and transformative work by looking at your thoughts and downloading them every day. All emotions are helpful, okay? All emotions are helpful. And for leaders, so if you are leading a team of people in your business, if you're working with vendors, customers, your team, uh, shareholders, whoever you are managing, parents with children, not giving you parental advice, but here's what I say to anybody that is working in partnership, in collaboration with another human being on this planet, which I would say is most human beings, <laughs> we need to process and do our work around our thoughts so that you're not transferring them onto somebody else. 
right? So if we have a negative thought about something and we're pushing it aside, guess what, folks? It's going to show up in our subconscious. It's going to show up in our communication, in our behavior. We might not be aware of it because we've done such a good job of masking it and pushing it aside, but it's still coming through in the people that we have connections with, okay? Like for years, I denied some things about myself. And then as I started uncovering the layers, it's like, oh yeah, oh yeah. This this is a good reason why this didn't relationship didn't work or this job didn't work or you know, this project didn't work. And it makes total sense now because I've been doing a lot more of the thought downloads and understanding how I impact other people. And I'm still going to make mistakes. I'm still going to blow it because that's, again, the beauty of being a human being is that you're going to do something wrong today and you can always fix it tomorrow, right? You can always do that thought download and take a different action tomorrow, make a different decision. There's no right or wrong decisions, right? It's just making a new decision. So out of all these sort of like leaders that are out there, right? Just recognizing that we need to do our own work first before we start going into other meetings and influencing some of the people that we lead and manage every day. And again, as a new leader, when I first started off like 30 years ago, managing people, no one ever talked to me about that. I started learning about self-awareness and emotional intelligence probably 10, 15 years into my role as leading and managing people. And I was like, oh yeah, I can actually impact people negatively or positively. And not to use that in a manipulative way, um, but it was something that kind of blew my mind a little bit. As a human, I want to have a wide range of emotions through big goals and experiences, right? So if we are living sort of this like positive vibe mindset of like, I need to be happy all the time. And when I'm not happy, I need to punish myself. It's like, I'm just going to tell you, it's not going to last for very long. It's not going to work that well. I want to invite you into the possibility of just creating these big juicy goals for yourself, feeling sometimes that terror, that negative thought of like, I don't know how to do something, doing the thought work around it, recognizing the feelings that are showing up for you in your body, and then starting to take different actions as a result versus like, oh yeah, I have this fallacy that everything is happy and smooth and rosy and shiny. And then when something gets confronted with me, you know, I freak out my nervous system. So we can continue to play that route. And I'm going to tell you, it just gets really tiring after a while. So pay attention to these new emotions that are getting generated when you're creating these new goals for yourself. Self-doubt is going to come up. Fear is going to come up. Worry is going to come up. Blocks are going to come up. And if you're doing those daily downloads, looking at your thoughts and your feelings, it's going to get easier. And it's not going to happen right away but you're going to start seeing and noticing patterns, shifts in your behavior and results, different results, better results, because you are doing that thought work. So feel on purpose. (sighs) Yeah, feel on purpose. You know, I'm not powerless. I am powerful, right? Make those declarations to yourself. I am curious. I am thoughtful. I am investigative. I am you know, collaborative with my network of people that or my resources that are available to me versus I don't know, right? So feel on purpose and then act on purpose as a result of those feelings. I think that's all I got for you today. Yeah. So let me see. Yeah. I just put down here, like we are not sometimes feeling on purpose. Um, we're unaware of our mind and our feeling connection, like our mind and feeling connection and how those feelings need to be processed because we're not doing those thought downloads. That would be my biggest thing as we wrap up this week and wrap up today's session is when can you start doing a download? When will you do your first download? Where will you record it? When will you do your second one? Let me know about it. DM me, say, Brenda, I did a thought download today and this is what I noticed and this is what I learned about myself. Uh, I'd love to hear from you and have a great weekend. We're going into the long weekend in North America, Labor Day weekend. So if you're celebrating it in some way with family, friends, have a great time. If you're going on the water, stay safe, wear sunscreen and stay tuned. September, there's lots of great speakers that are going to be coming on and on the podcast, on live. Um, So check them out. Go to the link in my bio or check out my stories. Take care, everyone. Have a great long weekend. Hi friends, thanks so much for tuning in to this week's guest on the Three Uniques podcast. 
Uh, as always, we really appreciate your time and your commitment to listening to our guests every week. And we'd love for you to be able to share this podcast with others and encourage other people to get out there and share their three uniques. So please take a few moments to like, share this podcast, leave a review and let us know what you think. And also let us know who you'd like to hear more from, uh, what type of guests you want us to bring on for future podcast interviews. Thanks so much. Remember, get out there and share your three uniques. There's seven and a half billion people on this planet and somebody needs what you've got. Take care, friends.